To complete our discussion of heaps, we will see how to use heaps in Dijkstra's algorithm and also how to use heaps for a different type of sorting. Okay, so remember that heaps are a tree implementation of priority queues in which insert and delete are both of complexity log n. You can build a heap bottom up in order n time and you can represent it as a tree and so you can manipulate it in an, sorry, you can represent the tree in an array so you can manipulate it very easily. So let's go back to Dijkstra's algorithm. So in Dijkstra's algorithm, we start with the initial vertex and we keep burning these vertices, right? So we keep visiting vertices according to their distance. So initially we set the distance to be infinity for everything, right? And we use uh, the starting point as setting the distance to the start vertex as zero. And then we find the smallest unvisited vertex, vertex set it to be visited and recompute the distance of each of its neighbors, right? So the bottlenecks were really at this part of the loop. So the bottlenecks are first to find the j with a minimum distance, right? So the naive implementation would take us order n time because we would have to scan all the unvisited vertices which are in, not in any particular order of distance and among them find the minimum, right? So what seems obvious from what we have discussed so far is that we should maintain distance as a heap, okay? and use delete max or actually delete min in this case because we would want a min heap, okay. So we would use delete min, but then we also have to recompute the distance. So recomputing the distance means examining every neighbor k of j. So to make sure that we can look up the neighbors efficiently, we can use adjacency lists so that we don't waste time scanning an entire row of an adjacency matrix. But the bottleneck here is that we need to update the distance, that is we need to get into the heap and change values. Okay, so we need to update heap values. Now we haven't really seen how to update heap values. We have only seen insert and delete min or delete max. Okay. So how does update work? Right. So supposing we want to change this value from 12 to 44. Right. Now if we are, if we increase this value, then with respect to its children, it cannot get any smaller. Right? So if 12 is bigger than 10 and 11, any larger value will also be bigger than 10 and 11. So if we make it 44, we don't have to look down. But because we made it bigger, it can become bigger than its parent and in fact it does happen. So if we replace 24, uh, 12 by 44, then we find that there is a heap violation above. So now we treat this exactly like we did insert. We look at the parent and swap. Okay? So we fix this violation upwards. Okay? So now we look and we have got 44 here and now we have to check whether it violates anything with its parent okay, and it does so we exchange that and finally when it stops when either there are no more violations or when we reach the root in which case we can't go up any further right. So increasing a value you fix violations upwards because in increasing a value you cannot become smaller than your children but you can become bigger than your parent. The other type of change is to decrease a value so supposing I take this 33 and I make it 9. Now again by the same logic because 33 was smaller than 44, 9 will also be smaller than 44. Any value smaller than 33 cannot create a violation up, so I must look down. Right? So if I bring it down to 9, then above there is a problem between 33 and 24. Right? So if this is my new value, I have to check with its two children and take the biggest one up, in this case it's 24. Right? So now having come here, I need to now check its two children and take the biggest one up, in which case it's 11 and so this is how it works. Right? So when I update values and decrease a value, I have to fix violations downwards because reducing a value cannot make it work bigger than its parent, but it can make it smaller than one of its two children. So if you look at Dijkstra's algorithm, the way it works is we take a vertex j and say update its distance. Right? So we have to update the distance of some vertex j which is somewhere in the heap. Right? So what our previous example showed us is if we, if we put our finger on the node in the heap, and change its value, we know how to adjust the heap. But how do we find where j is in the heap, right? So where is j located? So we need this extra information to be kept separately, right? So we will keep two new arrays, okay, pointing from the nodes which are 1 to n to the heap which is 0 to n minus 1 and vice versa from the heap which is 0 to n to the nodes, okay? So, so here in this picture, right, these two uh, things are drawn in different colors. So the red labels against the node indicate the vertex. So 44 represents the distance of vertex 8. Okay. 
and to indicate that we have an array saying that in node to heap saying that the node 8 in the graph is vertex 0 in the heap. Similarly, if I look at this, it says that this vertex is 3. So the vertex 3 in my graph is node 6 okay, in my heap. Conversely, if I am in the heap and I'm, if I am at node 4 which is represented in blue, then which vertex does this correspond to? Okay. So it says that the node 4 in the heap corresponds to vertex 5. So from the heap, given the index of a node in the heap, which node in the graph does it correspond to? So we have these two extra things which we set up and we have to update this when we do our swaps or inserts. Right? So now for instance, supposing we have this previous thing and we want to make this 33 into 9. Okay? So our goal is to reduce 33 to 9 which we did in the previous step. Now, now let's do this. So now when I do this, I need to go down to its two children in the heap and recognize that this 24 must change. Now since 24 must change, I must know also how to update it. So 24 is node 3 in the heap. So node 3 is vertex 2. Okay, So I have to go to vertex 2 here. So I need to up update these entries. So I need to update 6 and 1 okay, and 3 and 2. Okay. So therefore when I exchange the 9 and the 24, I must also exchange the 6 and the 2. I must say that now vertex node, vertex 2 in my graph is now at node 1 in the tree and vertex 6 in my graph is now at node 3 in the tree. Conversely, node 1 in the tree points to vertex 6, node 3 in the tree points to vertex, uh, points to vertex 2, node 3 points to vertex 6, right. So after this update, basically these two values have got exchanged from what they were previously. Okay? So in addition to swapping at this level, I also have to recognize that this swap happened. Now I do one more swap because 9 and 11 are to swap. So now I will swap the entries for 3, 6 and 8, 9 and similarly here 6, 3 and 9, 8, right. So the entries correspond to vertex 6 and vertex 9 and node 3 and node 8, right. So vertex 6, vertex 9, node 3 and node 8, these have to be swapped, right? So by keeping these two extra arrays, right, I can do these updates very easily because I have a way of going backwards and forwards between the heap index and the node index and unless I do this I cannot really use this for Dijkstra's algorithm because Dijkstra's algorithm will ask us to update a value in the heap but I need to know which value in the heap I need to update. The update can be done using this upward or downward manipulation exactly like insert or delete max but the real problem is identifying where the update starts. So as we saw before now we can use this heap with this update operation and find the minimum time vertex in log n time. And because we have adjacency lists okay, over the, all the loops, updating the burn times takes log n time per edge and they are totally order m edges. So overall we get n log n for updating, for finding the minimum n times and m log n for updating the minimum m times, so n plus m log n. Okay. You can use a similar strategy for Prim's algorithm. Okay. In Prim's algorithm, the only distance, no, the notion of distance is not the same. We do not accumulate the distance, we look at the cost of the actual edge. Okay, but still we need to track the minimum cost edge connecting a node to a tree, to the current tree and then we need to update these things after we add this edge to the tree. Right? So exactly the same idea of using a min heap with updates we will use for getting Prim's algorithm also down to the same complexity as Dijkstra's algorithm. So before we leave heaps, let us see how to use heaps to sort. Okay? So we want to sort a list of values. So what we can do is we can first build a heap, right. So we now start with some arbitrary sequence of values x1 to xn and then we build a heap and we possibly get reordered in some way as xi1, xi2 to xin but this is not in sort order, this is in heap order that is we know that the maximum is at the left and so on. Now I do a delete max and I pull this guy out, right. So I know that this is the maximum. Then after this, this something will come to the front, okay. At the next point that will come out and then I will get a second max and so on, right. So if I do delete max n times, clearly at each point I get the next maximum. So I am extracting elements from this heap in descending order and so I get a sorted output. I can reverse it, I can keep it in ascending order, it does not matter but I am just extracting the elements in a particular order and so this gives me a trivial sorting algorithm. Now each extraction takes log n time because it is a delete time. 
delete max right? or a delete min depending on what type of heap you are using. So you do n such extractions, so in n log n time you can get the elements out in sorted order and to put them in you took only order n time, so overall it is order n log n time. There is a small subtle thing that you can ask about this, the question is where do these values go? Right? So in initially in the first iteration if I have my heap looking like this, okay, this is my maximum. So it looks like I have to put it in a new list. Okay? But what happens after this step is that this value gets inserted here and then it percolates down via the heapify fix operation. Right? So when I delete the value at the root, I take the last leaf, put its value in the root and then I push it down so that all the heap properties are there. And after this now my heap only looks like this because this value is gone. Okay, so my heap ends with x min n minus 1. So I have a place in my array which is not being used anymore for the next delete max because the next delete max involves only n minus 1 operations. So therefore I can in fact at this point go and put this value back into the heap at this position and be sure it is not touched. Right? So now what will happen is I will have the max coming here, then I will have the next second max coming here and so on. So if I keep doing delete max, I will be propagating from the right the value in descending order and therefore finally my heap will actually end up being resorted in ascending order. Right? So this gives me an in place order n log n sort right? by just making sure that when I delete a value instead of throwing it away or putting it into a new list, I just put it into the place that was vacated right now by shrinking the heap by one value and then I automatically get an output in sorted order. Right? So heaps can be used to do a very different kind of order n log n sort in place.